Hello, I'd like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today I'm going to show you how to restring a semi rimless or cord mount frame. Restringing a cord mount, groove mount, or semi rimless frame, it takes patience. It takes a lot of patience, so be prepared. And it takes cord control, which we will talk about at the bench. Now, believe it or not, I used to have hair, so I know what a bad hair day is like. Certainly had a couple of bad tie days along the way when we used to wear ties to work. I understand they're bad makeup days. And yes, folks, there are bad string days. You may have a week where you knock five, six, eight, ten out in a row and have no problems, and then you get to that one that is just a bear. It happens. Uh, you're also going to find sometimes you actually almost have to have a coworker help you to separate the frame and the lens to get your packing strapping tape through. Number one on your list when you get a frame with a lens that has fallen out and it is a semi rimless is check the figure eight. The liner that runs along the top of the frame and holds the lens in place at the top. It's cord at the bottom. It's a tongue at the top. Make sure that it has not been damaged or torn. We'll talk about figure eight a whole lot more in another video. Speaking of which, number two, simply make sure you know what you have. There are a thousand versions of semi rimless frame and lens mounts. You don't always have the perfect figure eight liner and cord and four holes. It varies so much. So really take a very, very close look at what you have before just assuming that's it. A lot of this comes down to using the right diameter cord and or figure eight to get the job done. Hilco lists 10 individual part numbers on that category. Sios three, you have different diameter cord, different diameter figure eight and different diameter T liner. If you use something that's too small, the lenses, the cord will simply pull out and the lens will fall out. If you use something too big, it's not going to feed through the holes. Use the right diameter. Make sure that the holes are clear. Make sure that the figure eight liner is not slid around and blocking the hole. Make sure there isn't leftover cord. Make sure they're not damaged or closed in some way. Use a thumbtack, use a safety pin, and make sure that your holes are clear and clean. On string, make sure that you cut enough string, and I'll go over that in just a second, and make sure you cut the end of it at a really sharp angle. It's going to help you so much when trying to feed it back through. To take a lens off, if you will, or out, you use box strapping tape. And to put the lens back in or on, you use ribbon. Now, if you have another way of doing this that works consistently well for you, there are probably a million different ways. Simply choose one. Please don't send me emails and tell me that I'm doing it wrong or that you have a better way. Uh, if it works for you, then just do it the way that works for you. Safety bevel, yes, if you have that lens out and it is chipped, it's coarse at the edge, it has a real sharp front edge on it, by all means, hit, hit the hand stone, take that down, smooth it out. Chips, you could almost eliminate them with a little bit of time. Can you groove a lens that has a groove that is missing or shallow? Not really anymore. I mean, yeah, you could. We, there may be a whole separate video. It would require the edger and patterns, and no, you, you really can't. When you are pulling that core back over, I'll mention this again at the bench, always do it from the front. It's the natural curve of the lens that's going to help that cord fall in place. You know that I love to say stuff. So So I'm going to say, how snug does that cord have to be? Well, I'm going to show you it's going to be a tug plus three millimeters, give or take a little bit. Always finish the job, tuck your string in, make sure you don't have any ribbon. And remember, and this is really important, folks, your high plus people, the farsighted folks, can't see much up close. Your minus fours, fives, sixes, and sevens can see minute detail. Uh, they will pick out that little bit of leftover ribbon and uh, at the edge of the lens in the heartbeat. So make sure you're really careful with those. 
What I'm gonna do is take this frame apart and then simply put it back together and kind of talk through the steps. Now, before I can put it back together, I have to take it apart. And let's talk a little bit about how we get lenses out of a semi-rimless frame. The best way to do that is this packing strapping tape, and you wanna cut it to a very, very sharp point. Uh, somebody sent me a trick, uh, said that you could also use guitar picks. Seemed like a really good idea. She actually had some pictures of how she had modified them. I think this one's a little flimsy, but that certainly might work. Uh, so might wanna think about that. Pull the frame away from the lens where it meets the frame and the cord. Slide your packing tape in there and roll it to the back. The curve of the lens, the natural curve, is going to make it want to drop off of the back. Less chance of chipping. This is a learning moment, so we're gonna just get rid of that cord that's in there. And what did I say the first step was, was to make sure that my figure eight looks good, which it does. It's there all the way around. It's not blocking any of the holes. If I had any issues with holes, a thumbtack or a safety pin, can make sure those holes are open. Everything's good, excellent. You're gonna find these little kits all over the place. You probably have a drawer or two of them floating around in the office. What I would suggest that you do is open that kit up, take out your ribbons because those are awesome and toss the rest away. I mentioned in the opening about how important diameter of string is. The cord that I pulled out of here, clear is it's a it's a good thick size cord. If I compare it to my 30 pound, they look the same. So that's what I'm going to use. If I use something too light, again, it is going to pull out on me. This is 160 yards of fishing line. This costs like $2 at Walmart, guys. So don't be shy. Grab yourself a big long piece and you'll understand why in a minute. Take your cord, and maybe the most important thing of all is cut the end of that cord at the sharpest angle you can get on both ends. And you'll find plenty of places where people insist that you absolutely, positively must do the nasal or the temporal first. Honestly, folks, it doesn't matter in the slightest. Feed through enough that it would meet the figure eight on the other side. Feed it through the lower hole. And you know what? Let's, let's hop over to the whiteboard for just a minute and talk about direction and tidying things up. Even with the close-ups, I know it's a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on. So I took that illustration, which you will find on the Optician Works website, and tried to recreate it as best I could here on the whiteboard for you. Here is how the cord feeds through from the inside of the frame to the outside, back to the inside, and up. If you have a very traditional figure eight liner, a piece that slides into the groove that is actually part of the frame, then you have to be very careful that your cord, as it comes up, doesn't reach past the end of the figure eight. If it does, it has no place to go and it will stick out. If you have too much figure eight, if the figure eight comes down too close to the hole, you need to slide the figure eight out, trim it a little bit, push it back, make sure you're even and have enough left on this side so that you have enough cord that it's not going to pull out on you and that you have enough space to trim it and leave a gap between the two. If you have traditional figure eight and you have the groove that is actually cut into the frame, you can pinch the cord into it. You can make it disappear and you can help grab it. Uh, instead of having it slide around on you when you're trying to size it up, if you pinch this bottom cord into here, you can do whatever you want up here and it's not gonna move on you. So you can use that. Now, if your figure eight is not a traditional slide in, let's say this is a permanent part of a metal frame, this string cannot be pushed into a groove that doesn't exist. It is floating out in space. It has a gap between here and the lens. 
In order to make that disappear, you either need to press it into the groove of the frame if you have it, or you need to get this to tuck into the groove on the lens. So you mount it up and then you rub your fingernail between here and the lens that's now taking up this space. And eventually, sometimes you need to take that um, strapping tape again or that, maybe that guitar pick and pop that in. It'll finally pop into the groove on the lens and disappear for you. All right, picking up right where we left off, I've got this string pulled through my one side. I've got it through the hole, up and out, heading towards my nasal side. I've got my nice sharp end on there. I can pull it through. And I've got it set up like that. Now it's time to put my lens back in. I'm gonna trim a little bit of that off. Looks good. Again, pressing that into place like we just covered on the whiteboard. If I've got a groove, use it to your advantage. Set it in there, clean things up so when it goes back together, everything is neat and tidy. All right, let me get my lens set in here. And here is where the extra string comes in handy. Give yourself a good grip, pull this tight, and tug it a few times. This fishing line is incredibly strong. Don't be scared. Pull your lens back out. That groove, that mark, that turn in here is your mark to pull that through. A small frame, two millimeters, a big frame, three or four. That's enough to get you that snugness that you need. Again, use my groove to my advantage. Get it set in there. Pull it through the other side. Trim off my excess. Once again, make sure I got everything neat. I'm not hitting my figure eight. I don't have anything pointed up and out on this. Squeeze that down into the groove. Grab my lens. Grab my ribbon that I took out of that packet. And work that cord around till you get a snap. Pull that cord through, tuck that string in, and we've got ourselves a lens back in a frame. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching me on Facebook, please hit that like button. It does help us out. And make sure that every one of those lenses that you're putting back in the semi-rimless frame comes from Laramie K. I will see you again week together again and scratch my mustache.